Hi everyone, I hope you're all well and I hope it's a little bit warmer for you wherever you are in the world. In England it's really really chilly at the moment uh, and I don't like the cold so I'll be honest, <laughs> it's not my favourite time of year. So anyway, we are doing a fig this month in coloured pencil and we've got a bit of a deep purple theme going on so we've done an aubergine for watercolour and we're doing the fig uh, for coloured pencil. Now the reason that I've chose this is because this subject is not an easy one um, to pick colours for. So if we were using multiple brands, if we were using luminance and um, we could bring a Pablo in and different bits and pieces like that, um, then it wouldn't be a problem because we've got, you know, 10 times the colour choice. But as an exercise, if we're just using Faber-Castell, which I want to try and stick to because one, a lot of you have only got Faber-Castell and two, because it's a good exercise. Um, you know, we've got to broaden our horizons and we've got to really think about what colours that we're choosing and how we're going to achieve this really deep purple. Because, you know, if we look at the deep purples, we've got mauve. Well, mauve is nowhere near the purple of this. Uh, and the deepest purpley colour we've got uh, that matches is red violet, but it's not deep enough. So, you know, we've really got to think about, well, how are we going to achieve this? And that's that's where, um, you know, good colour picking choices and testing things before you go and just bang it on the paper is really, really important. So we're going to have a little bit of an exploration today. So that'll be fun. So, right, we've got a line drawing down and I've got some colours picked out. We're going to see how that goes and let's begin. Right, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in these little uh, little tiny bits of sort of creamy yellow that sit on the surface of the skin of the fig. So I'm just very lightly taking those away with the putty rubber. So let's just have a look. We can get rid of the, the other little bits that are marking off the, the shine as well, it doesn't matter. So just tap it away until you can barely see it. Okay, and um, for this we're going to use cream. So Faber-Castell cream, which is 102. And we are having a very, very sharp point. And what we're going to do is we're going to use it rather like an embossing tool. So with our sharp point, we're going to dig into the paper, push it right in. Where's my, uh, where's my drafting brush? So that it goes into the paper. Okay, so we're just gonna go around doing that for all of the little marks. So be aware of the size, be aware of the direction. Some of them are just tiny dots. Some of them are bigger. You don't have to put all of them in if you don't want to. And just put a few in but make sure you really press the point of the pencil into the paper, and if you need to sharpen, then do so. So your nib may, uh, if your pencil is extremely sharp, your nib may break, that's absolutely fine. Happens to me all the time. If you wanted to use an embossing tool instead, then you could, but, um, I want to go straight in with the cream this time, so we've got a little bit of colour down. Straight in there. My pencil started to blunt off a bit now, so I'm going to sharpen it in a second. I'm just going to get these last couple in there. Okay, let's just sharpen it. Mm. 
And some of these are irregular shapes as well, so you know, don't make them all sort of lines. Give them a, a bit of a wiggle as you pull down with the pencil. Just really make sure to push in. Oh, well, see, there you go. Okay, so I just need to sharpen again now. Go back to that one because it didn't go in right into the paper. And then just bring a couple of the dots here on the fine lines. And because we've embossed these, our pencils should skate around them and leave them that, uh, that lovely cream colour. Okay. Right, so the first thing that we're going to do is, aside from the yellow of course, uh, our next step is we're going to get some green on. Reason being is the green, as you can see, does sit underneath the red on the skin. The red creeps up over it in a, in a pattern. And so we want to have the green on so that sat right underneath our red colour. Okay, and we've got this little cap that's sitting on the top of the fig and it looks like a little cap. So we're gonna leave that and we're just going to remove just down our outline a bit, sort of halfway. As the green comes down further than you think. Okay. So I'm just gonna go to about there. Right, okay, and we're going to start off with uh, chromium green opaque, and I didn't sharpen mine before I started, so I'm going to go and do that now. Right, okay, that's nice and sharp now. Okay, so we're going to come from underneath the cap, and we've got this little light section here. So I don't want to bring too much of the chromium green into that, and then we've got a highlight right down almost the center, just to the left hand side as well. So we're going to avoid that. So I'm just going to stroke down and I'm not using the normal elliptical strokes for the moment. I'm just stroking down because we've got some texture in this, uh, in this skin, in the green. So I'm just stroking down, following the direction of growth. and just plotting in this sort of uneven texture and leaving a few few little gaps of white there just along the way. Until we come to that highlight. Okay, so let's just start pulling slightly further down a little bit just stroke it down in a really irregular texture. So getting this texture on quite early. Okay. And then down the other side, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to come right up underneath that little, little, little cap on this side. This is our, our shadow side. So nice light pressure as well. Just keep following just down the side there. And 
Okay, now I'm just going to neaten up my edge. I'm going to come back to the top here and just add a bit of another layer just to darken it up just under and there. Just a little bit. And then I'm going to neaten this area off, add a tiny little bit there because we're not, uh, it's not a highlight there at the, right at the top. And I need to shorten that space there. Right, okay. Right, so our next colour, we're going to move to earth green yellowish now. And we are going to go back to a typical small circles here. So going over what we've done, very light pressure. And just following down. And you'll see that some of those little white spaces that we left, it's picking out some of those highlights. So keep working down. And we're going to have to repeat this whole procedure um, again. So we're going to have to go back in with the dark and then over with our next two colours to get the level of saturation we want. So feather it out, which means really lift the pressure to as light as humanly possible when you get to about there. So it's just a whisper of colour. Okay, and then let's come down, let's go over those little marks there. Okay, and now underneath that little stalk, nice light pressure. And nice small circles. And then again, feathering out once we get sort of around that mark there. A little bit of reflected light on this side, but we don't need to worry about that for the moment. So just concentrate on getting a nice, even coverage. Okay. Okay, and then our last green to go over the top here is May Green. Now we're gonna bring a tiny little bit into this light section and you want to feather it in really, really pale. Just there. Really nice and light and we want it extremely light in our highlight section. So nice and pale where the highlight said it's strongest just here. Okay. And now we can just go and go over the top of what we've already done. Start working down. And as we start leaving the neck and we're coming into the, the base of the fig, where the highlights are not as strong, we can start coming into the middle now. There's still a highlight, but it's not a strong highlight like it is on the, uh, on the neck there. Let's make sure to just cover that whole area. And down to the point where we left off before. 
taken this across the middle. You can see it's skated over our little cream spots, so we've got those in. We haven't lost those. Let's start from up here again and work down. I'm just giving a good coverage all the way over. And then again, feathering out when we get to towards here. Okay, all right, so we're coming back to our chromium green opaque now. And if yours isn't sharp, if you've lost the point, then go and sharpen it again. And we're gonna do exactly the same. Don't worry about going over the same marks, make new ones. We're just going to stroke it down in that irregular pattern, just adding some texture. I'm going to bring a tiny little bit in just here so we've got a whisper of it just down that highlight and it doesn't look like there's hard marks in there okay just a little just a whisper of it that's better okay and then coming down bringing little bits of it down into here and that can finish there Okay, and then back to the other side, let's bring, bring in some markings from the top. Just make sure you're following the direction of growth, noting that it splays out here so you won't just be coming straight down, you'll be starting to go off to the side as we move from the neck into the, the body. Okay, and then we can lift the pressure a little bit more as we get down here. Okay, let's have a look. I'm just going to just up my pressure ever so slightly and just bring in a few little darker marks right at the top there just like we did before okay and then dust off okay so back to the earth green yellowish now nice and gently nice light pressure it's coming over what we've done Keep it nice and light. Now I'm working down the right hand side, sorry, the left hand side first because I'm right handed. If you're left handed, you might want to switch and work the opposite way around. So then you're not dragging pigment across the paper and working underneath your hand. I am gonna come across the middle now with the May Green very gently just to sort of unify the colours a bit from the top here and just coming down stroke when I get to that side okay and then over to our may green so what <clears throat> excuse me one last layer of that I'm going to put, pop another tiny little bit 
into that highlight area there. And I'm going to bring a little bit in on the right hand side of the highlight, leaving that main sort of white bit slightly to the left. Okay, it's a nice even layer of this. Straight down, make sure that your edge is nice and even and correct. So you can crisp it up if you need to a little bit. Up through the middle now again. And over to the right hand side. And further in, lifting the pressure as we get down here again. Right, okay, so I'm just going to take a tiny little bit of uh, cold grey one now. I'm going to apply that just over that little bit of highlight that we left just in there. Just nice and gently. I'm also going to bring a little bit just through here. So keeping it to the right hand side, just there. I'm just stroking just a little bit through there okay picking up sky blue now so faber castell sky blue which is 146 and very 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 light touch just going to bring a little flash of blue just into that highlight area just there and a tiny little bit just in here. Highlights never pure white and this you can see that there's a blue tone in here so we're just going to add that little bit of interest there. All right okay okay so we're going to move to our purples now so let's let's just remove the last bit of graphite from around the base And as always, we're going to be working dark to light. So getting our darkest shadows down first and then our lightest colours last. Okay, so for our darkest area, we were very, very dark down the base here, right at the bottom. And we've got a bit of reflected light in a band around here. And then we are very, very dark across the middle there and then fading out as we go up um, up the body towards the next. We've got this band that sort of moves like that, a deep, deep purple. So our first color we're gonna put down is warm gray six. So normally for a shadow, oh, sorry, I was just sharpening them. Normally for a shadow, I use warm gray five, but this is particularly dark. So we're gonna go for warm gray six. Um, light hand as always and see how we get along. So let's start at the base here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just stroke along the bottom. Make sure I've just got the, a little bit of a guide to work to. Bit of an awkward position to hold my hand in here. So that just gives me something to work towards. Okay. So nice, small, circular motions. Starting right at the bottom. Feathering out. As we come around to this left hand side where we can see that little bit of light. So 
Just move my hand a little bit. Kind of coming around there. And feather in around about now. So keeping it slightly lighter here for this, this little band there. So I'm just going to go back over at the bottom and just deepen up ever so slightly right at the base there. So feather in through this area here with the lightest touch. Okay, and then starting to bring it back in here, feathering out, or rather feathering around the edge, and then starting to work in slightly deeper as I'm in the center of the pig. So I want nice light pigment at the edge and then slowly building as we come inwards. Taking care, we've got that shadow that sits through the middle there. So we're gonna take care around that. A little bit of dark coming up the side of it. You can see much better now how our cream is picked up there. So spending some time on this helps us work out our shapes as well. So it sort of plots everything for the subse subsequent colours to be going on. this base layer. So alternating the pressure all the time, if I'm down in this area, keeping it really nice and light, as I'm in that middle band, I want more pressure and then lighter pressure again towards the highlights. So just keep an eye on it. Keeping on your pressure as you're going along. Okay, coming up at quite a quite a steep curve here because we've got that, that area of light there. So it's gonna barely barely touch that with the pigment and then back to the center and quite dark here yeah. And we're going to start to lift our pressure again in a minute as it starts to lighten. Just keep going for a little while. Okay, now I'm really reducing the pressure as I'm coming towards the green. I'm 
Now I'm just going to darken up. So I'm just, I'm not adjusting my pressure at all. I'm not uh, going over any harder. I'm just re going over the areas that I want slightly darker. Keeping exactly the same pressure. You don't need to push down any harder with your hand to get uh, to get more depth. You just need to re-go over. Okay, right, let's have a look at this highlight area here. So we can afford to come a little bit darker around here. Shows her up. Yep, a little bit darker in this base here. Let's just have a look there. That comes up a little bit further, like that. This just creeps in slightly. So, again, a little tiny bit darker just here. Let's look at this bottom again. okay so I think that's it for our base layer right okay so the next color that we lay down is going to be a color that we talked about earlier and that's mauve so as I said before this is completely in the wrong ballpark for uh, the fig it's not the right color but it's got that depth and that depth is what we need to sit underneath the layers of color uh, such as the red violet to create the depth that we want um, but that it won't be seen it'll be sort of hidden underneath the other layers but we need it in there so we're going to go with mauve and we're going to go over all that we've done down here so all of the gray areas and uh, remember to adjust your pressure accordingly feather out etc when we uh, when we go around okay right so let's begin so i'm going to begin at the base again Nice and gentle, coming around the side. And just build up nice and slowly in the small circular motions. Okay, so just coming around to the area where we've got that reflected light. Lifting the pressure slightly. Okay, so you can see now that with a very light pressure and with that grey underneath, um, you're just getting a slight purple hint. It's not, it's not terribly purple. It's not going to look obvious underneath all the other colours that we're going to put on top. So nice and gentle through there. Okay. 
and I'm going to come around to this side so that I'm not pulling the pigment back and over so nice and light here barely a whisper in that area there Okay, and just keep going, keep building nice and slowly, stay over what we've done. Take some tiny little bits of this into the uh, the right hand side of that highlight there. So you can see this sort of faint, faint purple glow there. It's mixed with the blue. To our very darkest area now. And now we're going to gradually start lifting the pressure as we move to that lighter area. Coming up towards the green. I'm going to feather this out slightly further than we did the grey. So bringing it up slightly higher and start to sort of come over the green a little bit. So very, very gently. Just coming up the side there. Let's have a look. Maybe take it just a little bit higher, right on the on the edge here on the left hand side. Just a few little bits there. Okay. So our next colour is Caput Morton Violet. So that's two six three. I'm just going to sharpen it because I haven't sharpened this one either. And once again, with this, we're going to go over everything that we've done exactly the same, nice, small, circular motions, light pressure, and we're going to feather out further. So this side, we're going to come further up here and further up here. So let's start. So I'm going to start down here again at our darkest edge. I'm just pulling around, making sure my edge is neat there okay and I can see already that that has given me adding that purple and that deep gray has given me a lovely color um that's going to work really well for this fig and that's the importance of choosing your colours wisely and testing them out first. So there is a, I have done a video, I think it's pinned to the new members post where um, I show you how I go about picking my colours. So if you're doing your own stuff and when you move towards doing your own art, it's really important to um, be, be very 
Be very careful about your colour choices. So I'm just going to use the point of the pencil here to just neaten my edge there. may have to come in with a Tombow in a minute and just neaten that up, but we'll see. Okay. So reducing the pressure as I move into this reflected light. And now I can start taking a few little textural marks of this colour into this reflected light area where we can see them nice and pale. Okay. And then over this way, so nice and light around here. Through this band, we still need a hint of this color, but it's gotta be really, really pale through that area. So let's pick it back up again over here. And start going over our purple. So go over everything that we've done first. We'll uh, we'll feather out further after we've got after we've got all that down. Just remember to alter the pressure in the different areas that you're in. So you've got light pressure, and then you've got barely there pressure. really important to make sure that we get a good coverage here and to be starting to fill in the tooth of the paper now and be reducing the, the bits of white that you can see every time we go over with a new layer So I've sort of gone over that area a couple of times just to give it enough depth.
Okay, so I'm starting to lighten my pressure again. Okay, and let's just stay there for a moment. Because uh, um, I just want to come down and bring, as I said, just a few little marks of this colour into that reflected light area here. So I can just see a couple of them coming through there. Just going to go over this just a bit just slightly more. Just there. Okay, and then we'll go back to this side and we'll start very lightly, very gently feathering up into our green here. So very light pressure. Open up. And now we can start being a bit sort of sporadic with the pattern. Just bringing it in, in places, leaving, leaving little bits in others. So I'm just bringing some little marks in over the top. Moving to more solid colour down there. Okay. Also need to bring a couple of markings into the highlight area, just to keep them nice and soft. Just make them nice and organic. So almost just a scribble, if you will. And over to this side, same thing. So just skate your pencil around, just creating these lovely markings. It's got to come up higher on this side. And then back to our circular marks down here. And then up to the texture again and bringing through a few lines here. Sort of a continuation of what we were doing with the chromium green opaque. Just there. And so we've got some sort of deep, deep lines there. So just gently come out the side. Just going to add a bit more depth here. And just pull those lines slightly further down so we can see a bit more texture. And back to the sort of scribbling motion around here. All those marks. Let's have a look. It's going to very gently come up the side here and start to create a little bit of an outline just here so just really look closely see what uh, what you're working with all right I'm 
going to come down a little bit further into here again just go over that little bit there a bit more so you can see how nicely that mauve and the grey sit underneath the caput mortem violet and serve to deepen it as much as we needed it to i mean you know go ahead and test without that color without those two colors um just lay out the caput mortem violet um the red violet and then the burnt carmine on top we we would get nowhere near this this depth this richness so you know Let me try a little bit more here. Okay. Right, now what we're going to do, I'm going to do this before we go to our last two colours, which are the red violet and the burnt carmine. And I'm going to add another very light layer of the mauve, just at the base here and just here, just in our very, very darkest areas. So just a nice light layer. We need to build up saturation. Um, and we don't want to put our, our last two colours on without our saturation being as full as we want it to. So just a bit more mauve, so just down here and through here. And then we're going to put our Caput Morton Violet back over the top. Once we've put that red violet and that burnt carmine down, if we were to add more layers, we'd have to repeat the whole process again and go from the grey, the mauve, caput mortem violet. We'd have to do the lot again, and we don't know um, how that's going to turn out. So I'm just going to quickly do it now, just add in a little bit while we've only got these couple of colours down. I just want to build more depth more more depth and just through this central band where it's really dark so still using light pressure never hard pressure unless we're doing a blend layer Okay, and then back to my cup of Morton Violet, so I'm going to have to sharpen that and take that back over that mauve. So we'll be back to where we were, but just with more saturation in the places that needed it. Okay, and then back over through this centre. And you can see where you've been with the purple, so you can see where you need to go to to get yourself back to uh, back to where we were. So just make sure you cover over all of that purple.
a little bit more here I can still see a tiny bit of purple showing through there okay so that's how we should be looking right now so more saturated in these two areas here and less everywhere else okay so that's where we should be okay so moving along we're going to go to red violet now which is 194 and again we're going to repeat what we've done we're going over everything again except we're going to bring a bit more into the lighter areas with this one so just building up with every layer and this is more of a, a sort of pinky pinky red So keeping your nice light pressure, I'm going to stroke myself a little bit of an edge here now with this, just there, okay, and I'm going to bring this ever so slightly more into that area of reflected light, so nice light pressure. Okay, really light. But we want to be sort of bridging the gap now between the colours. until we get to here where we just want to leave a little bit more light in that section there so we can come around and again just follow down into those little sort of fingers of texture let go down okay right so back over to this side coming up the edge there and then over everything we've done so we can go back to our light pressure now Okay, so coming up the side of the highlight into a sort of more textured area. Okay, and then into a sort of uh, scribbled patterns, if you like. Make some of them a little bit darker. Don't forget the ones that sit within the highlight. They are there, they're just lighter. Let's have a look. And bring few tiny little bits in from that left hand side on the highlights. Okay, and then I'm continuing around and I'm bringing a little bit of this colour into the bottom of this highlight here now. Just closing the gap slightly, getting a bit more of a pinky tone in there. 
and then back to this dark band here. Okay, we'll just keep going. If you need to sharpen your pencil at any time, then go ahead and do that. I'm doing those sort of stroking motions up that side there. We get to the neck here. And a more solid colour here again. Some of our some of our scribbled patterns. So just building on everything. Okay, so over to our texture. Coming back over here, making it a more solid colour just there. Let's just have a look. Right, so I'm just going to add a little bit more of this here. Around there. Tiny bit here, comes up slightly higher. Okay, right, so I'm going back to the Caput Mortem again. And once more, just coming into the very deepest area in the base here. So just at the bottom there. Let's just dust off. Oh, I've got a sharp bit. Once again, I'm just going to neaten that okay and then back to here again now we're really starting to um fill the tooth of the paper in this area it's starting to feel slippy now as opposed to uh resistant so which is exactly what we want we want to fill the tooth of the paper we want um all the little hills and valleys to be filled with pigment especially in these deep, deep areas. Sometimes we use the white of the paper as texture, like in here, um, but in these very dark areas, we want it filled. And that's why we've got so many layers going on in the very deep parts, because you need it. You don't want to fill it with, you know, just black. It's just not going to look attractive. So, And also hard pressure does not fill the tooth of the paper. It still leaves um, still leaves those little white gaps that you can see. Light pressure and sharp pencils is what fills in the holes. And even coverage. Uh, 
Okay, so just working around that dorky band. Making it even darker. I do actually have a fig tree in uh, in my garden, um, but obviously it's winter, so there's no figs on it at the moment. So this is a this is a store bought fig, but um, I'm hoping that we have some figs this year, and uh, maybe I'll be able to draw one of my own figs. Mm. Let's just have a look. Okay, that area is looking nice now. Let's just pull up slightly. And it's going to come up a little bit higher on this side. Right, okay, and we can just afford to go just a little bit higher on this side, just a little bit more depth. And then it starts changing colour there. Okay, well we've still got that in our hand, let's just come to our reflected light area and bring some more cup of Morton Violet in there. I'm just going to start closing this up now. Still leaving more light on this right hand side. Just going to strike a little bit of an edge there. Close it up a little bit further along the bottom here. So adding a little bit more pigment. Stroking a bit of an edge along there. Well, I've got a relative sharp edge. And I'm just coming in a bit. So always start off with a highlight bigger than you actually need. Because we can't put it back in. We can make it smaller, but we can't... Uh, we can't make it bigger. Right, okay. Okay, so over to our next colour, which is Burnt Carmine. And this has a decidedly more ready tone, so we want to focus this more sort of in this area where it's more pink. And then we're also going to bring it into the highlight areas as well. So let's start there. Not taking it over that very deep area um, that we've just laid down with the Caput Morton Violet. We're going to leave that. I'm just going to come up the side there. Okay. So you can see it gives that reflected light this nice glow. It's a lovely colour this is. And it appears in nature so much. Okay. It's a really, really, really good colour. And let's come around here. Just to there. I'm going to bring some in from the bottom here. Up the sides. And around there. Also going to bring some from this side, nice and light. 
Okay, and now we're going to start working it from about here and pulling it up into uh, into the areas where we've got the more uh, where it's more textural over the green. Do you remember to bring it into that center as well? Adding some more little textural marks where I feel that I need them. Okay, bringing it up on this side. So not going into that dark area. Just coming up and going over what we've already got down. Bringing it just into the side here. Right, okay. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the cold grey one. And we're going to start blending some of these uh, reflected light areas in now. So we'll start with the bottom one here. And I'm going to very gently come in around here start blending those colors together there let's just get a dust brush so cold gray one is sort of like white um but obviously with a, a colder and grayer tone Okay, and then I'm going to start pulling this just very gently down here where we've got some of those those lines and little bits of reflected light there. So nice and soft. You can just see little bits of it just there. Okay, and we've got the same up this side as well. So I'm just going to blend this area here. Just at the side there. Nice and gently. And a little bit of a reflected highlight just here. Okay, and now I'm going to bring it into our highlights, our main highlights around the edges. So bringing it in, just blurring it out slightly, but I'm leaving a little bit of white gap so that I've got space for that blue to go in. Just to add some interest. Just blending at the edges of the highlight area. Okay. And then we'll take a little bit of it into our area at the bottom here. Right, so that looks nice. Okay. Just going to pick up the sky blue now. And very gently bring some of that in here, so we can just see that reflection just there, and just on this side here. Just comes down over the purple, just slightly. It's just a nice... Okay. 
Okay, so in this area here, we do have a little bit of golden warmth. So we're going to bring that in with dark Naples Oak. Uh, dark Naples Ochre and that's 184. Now we're going to be very very light with this so we just want it as a sort of glaze so just coming over it's just going to bring a little bit of warmth in over the purple up into the green and just there Okay, and same on the other side. I'm going to very gently take it just through the middle, just in this section. And then over to this side, nice and gently. And I'm just sort of skating it over. I'm not really doing the small circular motions. Just to there. Okay, let's come down just a little bit here. Let's just have a look, see if it appears anywhere. And it does, it does just a little bit warmer, just there. So I'm just going to run a little bit through just at that bottom highlights. That's nice, nice contrast. Okay, and now while we've got this, we're going to go over with a sharp point into our cream marks and make them more the colour they're supposed to be, which is this sort of dark naples. So let's just push in, go over those a little bit. Okay, right, so I think that's the body of our fig done. So we've just that little cap left to do now. So let's get this done. So let's uh, remove the last bit of graphite from up there. Any little bits of dust that you can see floating around the page, you can pick that up as well with the putty rubber. Okay, right, so we're going to start with, um, for the top section, I'm going to start with Vista. Um, so we've got three browns here. We're going to use Vista, Walnut Brown and Brown Ochre. And we're going to be bringing some Chromium Green Opaque into this as well, because we can see quite a lot of green in this middle section and a little bit in the top section. Okay, so we'll start with Vista. And we're going to bring that into the top section and I'm going to pull it up from the join just towards the tip. Let's bring it round. Okay, and then I'm going to take the chromium green opaque. I'm going to pop a little bit of that in, but I want to keep that near to the join there, just for a tiny little hint of green not taking that all the way up to the end. And then with a very, very sharp walnut brown, I'm going to edge that join like so, just make it, uh, make it pop a little bit and just run a couple of very sharp lines through, just that. That's it, that's all I'm doing for that top little bit. We don't need to go crazy, we just need to, to get the color in there. Okay, so down onto the next section. So Bister again, and I'm keeping this in this V shape here that we've got. So just popping that in there and then bringing a bit from our join and just stroking it downwards from the top. So we're sort of leaving a band through the center there. Okay. I'm just going to sharpen my uh, chromium green opaque. Okay. So that's nice and sharp now. And we're going to bring this 
from here so from the top of where we put that vista and bring it up towards the other vista okay it's coming around that edge there and just bringing it in I'm going to take the walnut brown and I'm going to darken up over the top that little cut bit there and I'm going to pull some lines through this section over the top of that green pulled on a little bit far there so I'm going to need to extend my shape deepening that line there And I'm just going to deepen up just here across this bend. Go back to my chromium green. Just bring a little bit more in on top of the walnut brown there. And then with the walnut brown, I'm just going to create some little sort of figure eight patterns over the top of that vista. And then give this section an edge there as well. So an edge over both of these sort of folds there. Okay, okay. Right, so coming into onto this bit here and this bit here, we are going to use brown ochre. So let's work that on. So we'll pull that all the way on. Up to that divide there. Okay. And on the other side. Let's bring it all the way down. It's a tiny little bit of a fold at the end. So I'm going to leave that section there okay and then taking our cream from earlier the 102 I'm just going to go over this with the cream to just lighten it slightly and give it more of a, a yellow tone which is what we want Okay. There we go. Now to our walnut brown. Again, nice and sharp here. So just going to have a look. We've got some lines running through. Some nice sharp lines. Just at the edge there. So going to run a few of those through. And we're going to bring this all the way into this little pointy shadow area here and just fill that gap just to show that that's raised there. And I'm going to feather it just over the top of that blue area to show a little bit of shadow okay on to the other side again we've got a couple of little marks coming down and then with a nice sharp pencil I'm just going to outline here I'm going to come underneath that little fold there and outline that And then just come around the back of it so you can just see it sort of folded up there okay do that little bit of shadow and then take the cream and just pop a little bit of that into the gap give it a bit of color just make sure 
the areas that I want dark and nice and dark to re-go over them if I need to. Right, okay, I think that little cap is also done. So let's just, uh, just one second, just go over that a little bit more. Let's just have a look. I'm just going to grab my May green and I'm just going to come around here and bring a little bit more green just around here and right up close to the, the walnut brown there. Before we go into the highlights, so I'm just dragging a tiny bit more through. Okay, so let's stand back and have a good look now. Okay, so after having a good look at this and uh, standing back and observing it, then I'm really happy with it and I'm going to call it done. There's nothing really that I want to adjust at this stage. If you do, if you want to adjust any shadows or anything like that, you could always run a tiny little bit more of the Caput Morton Violet just into this area here if you needed to deepen up slightly. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm really happy with that. So uh, I hope that you've learned something during this one and I hope that you've enjoyed it. And if you do the project, then please tag me in it because you know that I love to see them. And until next time, take care. Bye bye.